boys what's good it's home i'm back today with what i believe is the fifth mock draft of this year this one with trades this is the first mock draft i will have done with trades included and there's not a ton of these out there so if you enjoy you know potential draft day trades as well as mock drafts i think you'll like this video it's me herm and i think you'll enjoy but let's get into it but first off, just a little shout out for me here. Follow my Twitter, at BigHerm underscore 24 on Twitter for the latest updates on the NBA draft, NBA free agency, trades, rumors, and college basketball news as well. So if you enjoy all that stuff, think about following me on there as well if you enjoy the channel. But also, remember to subscribe, like, turn it 2K by the end of the month, which I think we should. So hopefully you enjoy, but let's get into it. With the first overall pick, I have the Orlando Magic selecting Jabari Smith Jr. out of Auburn. I think the first three picks are kind of locked in at this point, if I'm being completely honest. I just think more likely than not, we know what the first three picks are going to be. Jabari Smith Jr. can space the floor, probably the best shooter in this draft class. Really smooth fit next to Wagner and Carter in the front court. And I think his ability to play off of other scores as well as, you know, be benefited by good passers like Jalen Suggs, like Markel Fultz, I think will be really solid and I think he'll be able to work off them really well as well as defend the perimeter. With him and Wagner defending the perimeter, I think they'll be really good defensively as well as Isaac coming back too. So I think they are set up to be really good defensively and hopefully improve offensively. Probably not a playoff team next year, but I like Jabari's fit on the roster. At number two, the Oklahoma City Thunder more likely than not going to select Chet Holmgren out of Gonzaga. It's just seems like the most logical selection here at number two because they need big men pretty badly you know they already have a good like primary score in Shea Gilgis Alexander as well as good passers in Shea and Josh Kitty. so I don't think they have a super strong need for a guy like Paolo Bancaro so to me a guy that can space the floor as well as you know be a great rim protector block shots defend on the perimeter is lo a little bit as well I think is a great pick here for Oklahoma City and one that is really smooth fit on the roster at number three there's Paolo Bancaro out of Duke going to the Rockets I think this is one that you know maybe Rockets fans are are getting a little bored of but it's probably just what the pick is going to be and they should have no reason to feel bad about that Paolo Bancaro fantastic player really really good you know probably has the highest star potential in this draft I think he has the highest likelihood of being a superstar but maybe not as you know interesting or like kind of flashy as the other two guys but his ability to break down players one-on-one -on -one, be a primary scorer as well as being a great passer of the basketball underrated thing about him is that he can really pass the ball well he can bring the ball up the floor which is huge for a team led by Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green two guys that aren't the best facilitators in the world so getting a guy out there in Bancaro who can pass the ball as well as score I think is a great fit on this Rockets team and they have a good f core with Green Bancaro Christopher Sangoon and Porter Jr. going forward that I think Rockets fans should be excited about. At number four, this is one that I struggled with, but I, I'm going to go best player available. A couple of other times I've went fit, whether it be Keegan Murray or Shaden Sharp. I've, I've mocked both of them to the Kings, but I think Jaden Ivey is just the best player on the board. Comparisons to John Morant, Allen Iverson, Dwayne Wade with his explosiveness, his ability to get to the rim, be great in transition, as well as just being a high-energy guy guy and I know he's kind of redundant with Fox that's one of the things I'm thinking of here is that I don't think the fit is perfect here I just don't I don't think Ivy is a perfect fit in Sacramento but one of the biggest things that Kings fans are going to remember is the time that they went for fit over talent and drafted Marvin Bagley the third over Luka Doncic because they already had Fox but they should have drafted Luka I think him and Fox could have even worked together I don't think the fit was really that bad but I don't think they should do that again I think they should go best player available and to me that's Jaden Ivy and him and Fox would make the most explosive backcourt in the league you couldn't argue that at all but in the future if they want to move off Fox something like that they'd have the ability to because they'd have Ivy and they also have Mitchell there as well and number five the Detroit Pistons who kind of got hold a little bit in the draft lottery process dropping down a couple spots but they shouldn't feel bad about this at all. Shaden Sharp, really high upside as a scorer. You know, has that potential to be a second star alongside Cade Cunningham. They already have a good wing score in Sadiq Bay, but Shaden Sharp with his athleticism, you know, with his three-point prowess, his ability to throw down dunks, finish at the rim, 
as well as space the floor and play some defense with flash defensive plays. I think Shaden Sharp is a really high upside guy, and this is kind of a swing for the fences because he didn't play at all this year at Kentucky. We haven't really seen him since high school, but the talent just kind of oozes off the screen when you watch this guy play. He's a really high upside guy, comparisons to Paul George, Jalen Green, and I think he'd be a really nice fit next to Cade Cunningham. I love Ivy. I think Ivy's the perfect fit next to Cade, but if he's off the board, I don't think Sharp's a bad fit either. At number six, the the Indiana Pacers on the clock here, and I'm going to have them take Keegan Murray out of Iowa. They have Tyrese Halliburton already. It's being reported that Miles Turner is going to be there long term. They have Chris Duarte. TJ Warren's a free agent. I think power forward is a spot that they need to address. And they get a low maintenance score here. Doesn't need plays drawn up for him. Doesn't need the ball in his hands all the time. But he's going to score as a guy that will probably average 15 points a game his rookie year. Just doesn't need the ball in his hands, but finds ways to score, whether it be cutting, slashing, or just understanding how to get open. And he's really good at, on offense, but also can guard positions one through four pretty effectively as well. So has some, you know, great opportunity in the pick and roll with Halliburton, but also defensively is good for you. And I think it's a high upside pick and a guy that's a much smoother fit next to Miles Turner than a guy like Damanis Sabonis was. I think Keegan Murray and Miles Turner will feed off of each other. He can also space the floor a bit as well. So with two bigs that can space the floor with Keegan and Miles Turner, the Pacers will have some of the best spacing in the league and I think that'll be fun to watch with Halliburton out there passing the ball in round two. I think it'll be sick to watch there. And I love Keegan Murray. Mike Sh- I think it's Mike Schmitz, the guy who's going to the Blazers now, but he has him number four on his big board. I believe he was fifth on mine. I like Keegan Murray a lot, a guy that is in the second tier for sure, but is a really good player, and I think he's a good fit here in Indiana. We have the first trade, the first trade of the video, and it is with the Portland Trailblazers. They don't get Jeremy Grant here. I know that's one of the big things a lot of people are talking about, but P.J. Washington. They move back six spots. They get P.J. Washington, and the Hornets get pick number seven. The big thing with the Blazers here, if Shaden Sharp is still on the board, Keegan Murray, both of those guys are phenomenal fits in the Blazers system, but if they're not there, you know, Matherin's on the board, Jalen Duran, but none of those guys wow me for the Blazers, so I'm going to go and get a guy in P.J. Washington. Washington, who can be a really athletic power forward for you or a small ball five, I think would be really solid. He seems like a guy that the Hornets are willing to move. And if that's true, I think the Blazers should take this chance and go and nab him up. They only move back six spots here and get a young guy that I really like. PJ Washington might be better than the guy who goes at number seven year one. So I think this is a good trade for the Blazers and the Hornets. The big move for them here is so that they can get Jalen Duran out of Memphis. They've needed a center for a long time. That's one of their biggest needs for years now. And Duran is basically the best one in this draft. It depends on whether or not you want to call Chet a center. If Chet's a center, Duran's the second best. But Duran, really, really high upside as a center. Really athletic defensively can guard on the perimeter as well as in the post get some comparisons to Bam Adebayo because of that ability is great at rim protecting blocking shots as well as catching lobs on the other end and finishing inside 230 or 40 pounds one of those two really strong big player imposing at 611 and isn't afraid to throw some bodies around I think he'd be great in the pick and roll with Lamella Ball and would be the best rim protector the Hornets have had in you know the Rosier Ball era there and I think he'd be a great fit. This really helps the Hornets become a better team, push more for the playoffs. They need defense, and they need a center, and Darren fills both of those needs. And number eight, the New Orleans Pelicans are on the clock here. I have them going Dyson Daniels. I think this is a perfect fit. I think Daniels is the ideal fit in New Orleans because they have basically positions two through five filled out already with CJ McCollum, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, and Jonas Valanciunas. So point guard is kind of the big need to me, and there's a good point guard here in Dyson Daniels a guy who's going to be good defensively from day one hopefully can space the floor but right now that's not the best part of his game but really good defensively can also pass the ball well and rebound well for a guard funnily enough kind of fits in that Lonzo ball mold which is weird because they got rid of him and really didn't use him well at all so he's a guy that can come in can play that role for them and be a guy who can pass the rock to all these stars they have can play defense on the other end as well as get rebounds and second chance points as well i think daniels is the ideal fit here in new orleans and this is the perfect scenario for the pelicans at eight 
at number nine this is great for the spurs too because this is a guy that i didn't think would be on the on the board at number nine but because of the hornets trade up for durin matherin is still on the board and i have the spurs going matherin at pick number nine i've seen him mocked as high as number six to indiana i, I don't think they pass on either sharp or murray i think both those guys would go if they're on the board for indiana but matherin a guy who shoots the rock really well you know spaces the floor I think he's kind of similar to Tim Hardaway Jr. in his offensive ability, his length, but isn't the best defender in the world, but can pass the rock pretty well, can shoot the ball, space the floor, has high offensive upside, and with a team that doesn't have a great amount of scorers realistically, they have Keldon Johnson, DeJounte Murray who can both put the ball in the basket, but they don't really have a ton of guys outside of that who you can just give the rock and tell them to score. You know, Walker and Vassell both have their flashes, but they're not super consistent. So getting a small forward here and Matherin who can go and get a bucket for you as well as space next to drivers who can kick to you I think is a good fit for San Antonio at number 10 we have the second trade and the Wizards I think if Dyson Daniels is still on the board I think they stay here or even Duran because I believe Gafford is the only center they have who's not a free agent and then at point guard they don't really have anything they have Ish Smith, Raul Neto, Cassius Winston so they need a point guard really really badly but they also need a center but both Duran and Dyson Daniels are off the board here so I think they trade and the Wizards here receive Malcolm Brogdon who I think is one of the most underrated point guards in the league has had some injury problems but when he plays really good defensively can space the floor average 20 points a game is one of those guys that's a near all-star not quite an all-star but about as close as you can get and you get Brogdon here as well as the first pick of the second round and the Pacers receive the number 10 overall pick Contavious Caldwell Pope and Ish Smith it seems like the Pacers want to move Malcolm Brogdon because of Halliburton, you know, and Duarte, excuse me, just the young guys they have out there at guard. It seems like they want to get off of Brogdon, excuse me, so that they can give, you know, Halliburton full responsibility of the point guard role. And I get that. And I think that's smart for them. And the Wizards here pairing... Brogdon next to Beal, Kuzma, Porzingis. I think this can help you make a push for the playoffs. I really do. If you want Beal to stay, I think this is a really good job of doing that. It gives you a solid four going forward to really help you, you know, push for the playoffs, do all that stuff. And I think this is great for Washington. And if they can do this, I think it's solid for them. And the Pacers young rebuilding team, I think it makes sense to try to get another young player. And I have them taking Johnny Davis out of Wisconsin. Can play some shooting guard. We saw Duarte play some small forward and this could give them a lineup of Halliburton, Johnny Davis, Duarte, uh, Keegan Murray, and Miles Turner. A really solid five to build around for your rebuild moving forward. I think that's really solid. Probably not going to make the playoffs this year with that team but going forward I think they'll just continue to grow together and get better together. That's a really great unit to go forward with and can help kind of give you a speedy rebuild I think. I really like those guys together. Davis is scoring next to the passing ability of Halliburton as well as Davis is a really really good defender on top of that with Turner with Murray with Davis you have one of the better defensive teams in the Eastern Conference at this point and you're really young as well which is cheap maybe you go out and get a free agent as well I think the Pacers could be really interesting with this pick and getting both Davis and Murray is a is a win for the Pacers here this would be a a plus draft for them also getting off of the contract of Malcolm Brogdon this is an a plus draft for the Pacers but I also think this is a good trade for the Wizards. All right, at number 11, the Knicks are on the board, and if AJ Griffin is still there, I think they take him. Yes, he has some injury history, but 50% on catch and shoot threes this year at Duke, 45% on threes in general, is a sniper outside of Jabari Smith Jr., probably the best shooter in this draft class, but might be the best catch and shoot player in this draft class. Get him next to a guy like, you know, RJ Barrett, Julius Randle, you know, spacing the floor next to them. They drive, they kick. AJ Griffin will hit that three. Knicks fans would love him. I don't know if he's going to be a star, but he has some high upside comparisons to both Jalen Brown and Jimmy Butler with the 3 and D potential as well as, you know, the shooting ability that Jalen Brown possesses as well and some athleticism. Hopefully he can get back to the athleticism we saw in high school. It wasn't quite there this year in Duke, likely because of the two years he missed in high school with those injuries. Just not quite the same of a player, but still really, really solid. If you can look past the injuries, I think this is a great player at number 11. At 12, the Oklahoma City Thunder are on the clock, and I have them going Mark Williams out of Duke, going that ultra-tall ball lineup, play chat at the four, play Mark Williams, 
Williams at the five. You also have Giddy as a really big guard out there. Shea Gilgis Alexander has a really long wingspan as well as Lou Dort. You'd have the longest wingspan of any team in the NBA if you're running that lineup out there, as well as just being really good defensively. The biggest thing that the Thunder needed was front court players, both power forward and center, and they addressed that here with two really, really big guys. Mark Williams at the combine coming in at seven foot two with a nine foot nine standing reach, the highest in the NBA it would be from day one. And I think these two guys next to each other would be super interesting to watch. You know, maybe there are lineups too where Lou Dort's not out there and they have Poku playing the three. And you see Shea, Giddy, Poku, Chet, and Mark Williams out there would be super intimidating to other teams and it would just be really fun to watch and good defensively. Both Mark Williams and Chet really good defensively. This is great for them. I think this is a win for the Thunder and I really like how this draft is going for them. At number 13, the Blazers are on the clock here and I have them going Jeremy Sohan out of Baylor. Getting a good defender, a guy who can pass the ball, can you know rebound the rock as well as setting good screens. As a guy that gets comparisons to Draymond, Ben Simmons, for a guy that's not going to be an ultra scorer for you but basically does everything else at a really high level. And with shooters on the team like Anthony Simons, Damian Lillard, I think you can more than handle a guy who's not the best shooter in the world with Sohan. I think he can be out there with PJ Washington who shoots pretty well for a big man actually. Nasir Little would be back. You know, maybe Nurkic resigns. I think this is really good fit for the Blazers. A good defender, a good passer. You know, maybe take some of the passing responsibilities off of Dame. I really like this for Portland and I think it's a good fit here. And with the trade, they've got both Sohan and PJ Washington for pick number seven. And I think that's good value. At 14, the Cavs are on the clock. I have them taking Malachi Branham out of OSU. One one of the biggest risers throughout the pre-draft process because the more they watch the more you can see the upside as an overall score was a really good shooter this year at Ohio State I believe 38 39 percent something like that before college he didn't really show that kind of shooting prowess but I think as a guy that in the NBA will be a good shooter and has scoring upside as well some comparisons to Karis Levert Chris Middleton for his ability to break down defenders with his handle as well as get to the mid-range get space for himself to shoot and projects as a pretty good defender as well who can def who can defend one through three pretty easily is probably going to be a shooting guard in the league and i think his fit in the backcourt next to darius garland would be really smooth especially if they're losing colin sexton i think getting a shooting guard should be the the main priority here for the Cavs, whether it's Agbaji or brandon here at 14 at 15 i have the hornets taking the guy i just mentioned oshai Agbaji out of kansas a senior good defender good three-point shooter really experienced will be ready to come in day one and be a contributor because of the experience Experience, compares favorably to Desmond Bain with his ability to hit threes, play defense, just all the intangibles you like, and just do the right things on the basketball court. And the Hornets, again, like I said, needed defense badly. They got it with Duran, and they get it here as well with Igbaji. Maybe you try to play him at the three, but you can also play him at the two. Depends what they're doing with Terry Rozier. I think they should keep him. If that's the case, you can play him at the three, Bridges at the four, and Duran at the five. And you have a really young, fast, flashy lineup out there for the Hornets, which I think would be really fun to watch. You know, maybe you want another wing here rather than a guard, but I think this is a good fit. Can also bring the ball up the floor. I like Ibaji, good defender good fit for charlotte at 16 i have another trade and this is one that might be a little more controversial but i have the hawks receiving jeremy grant who it's rumored they're interested in was a big article on that with bleacher report the other day that the hawks were really interested in jeremy grant they also get killian hayes who you know was i believe to the seventh overall pick a couple years ago and just hasn't been that great but the hawks need a backup point guard badly and they get that here as well as getting jeremy grant and the pistons receive john collins as well as the number 16 over Overall pick for the Hawks here you get a guy that's a little cheaper actually than Collins and Jeremy Grant and a guy excuse me who has much higher upside defensively with Grant and honestly it has shown a little more scoring prowess so while Grant I don't think has as high of an upside as a guy like Collins I think he's a really good player right now averaging 20 points a game for the Pistons and really good defensively can guard one through five get steals get blocks as well as hitting threes and scoring for himself on the other end would be a great pairing next to Trey Young and they get more defense they already have Hunter out there you know they get Grant next to Hunter in the front court two really 
good defenders. And I like Killian Hayes' upside. I really like them coming out of the draft. You know, great passer of the basketball. If the shooting can come around, I think he'll be a good NBA player. And for the Pistons here, you get a great pick and roll slash lob partner for Cade Cunningham. I think him and Collins would be super exciting to watch, actually. And it would be really fun together. You know, maybe run Collins at the four and Bagley at the five in Detroit. And I think that could be really interesting for them as well as they have Shaden Sharp at the two now. So they could run out a lineup of Cade, Sharp, Sadiq Bay, John Collins, and Marvin Bagley the third, which I think would be really fun. I think that's a fun lineup in Detroit. Are you a playoff team? I don't know, probably not, but you might push for the play-in. And I think that this would be the most exciting the Pistons have been in quite some time. And at 16, I have the Pistons selecting Tari Eason out of LSU, a guy who has some comparisons to Jeremy Grant. So you get Collins and a guy who compares favorably to Grant as well with his ability to guard one through five, the versatility, the defense, the athleticism, as well as, you know, improved shooter at LSU this year. His freshman year was a pretty bad three-point shooter, but pretty much all his shooting statistics went up in year two, and that's why he is near the lottery. It will be a near lottery pick, probably somewhere in the mid-teens, but I think for Detroit here, you get Collins and potentially a guy that can play similarly to Grant as well, so I think this is a win for Detroit, but I also like the Hawks getting Grant. I think he's a better fit next to Trey than Collins is. And at 17 here, I have the Rockets selecting Ujman Jang out of France. I think one of the most overrated players in this year's draft class. The stats just don't really deserve this high of a, of a pick, but NBA scouts like him. So I can't drop him out of the first round or anything like that. I'm not going to say NBA scouts don't know anything. I just don't love Usman Jang. Usman Garubo was a guy last year who was a first round pick. I didn't really like him either, and he didn't really do anything in year one. Maybe Zhang will be better. Can bring the ball up the floor. Uh, I've seen some highlights where it looks like he's a good passer, but only average one assist per game in the NBL. So I don't know if, if he's going to try to be a guard in the NBA, if he's going to be a wing. But defensively, he projects highly. He can rebound. He can do a lot of different things for you. But he's just really raw as a prospect, and the performance just hasn't been there yet for me. I think at this point you're projecting, and the Rockets seem like a team who, you know, with Paolo there, with the guys they have, they can take a shot here. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, that's okay. And I think it's worth an upside shot here at 17. At 18, I have the Bulls picking EJ Liddell out of Ohio State University is a pick that I've mocked multiple times. I just love EJ Liddell as a bench forward for the Bulls. They really need forward depth more than anything else. And you know, if they lose Levine in free agency, maybe DeRozan goes back to shooting guard, maybe Liddell cracks the starting lineup. Really good defensively, average almost three blocks a game as like a 6'5 forward, which is crazy. But really really athletic feels like a, a Matisse Thibel who's better at offense would be the comparison I'd give for EJ Liddell because he can hit threes he can hit a little mid-range he's probably not going to do a ton of creation for himself but isn't adept offensively is pretty good there so I think inept is the word I was looking for, but oh well. He's good defensively, he's good offensively. Just feels like a, a do-it-all kind of player, a gadget guy that I'd like in Chicago. At 19, I have power forward Jake LaRavia out of Wake Forest going to Minnesota. The biggest hole for me for Minnesota is power forward. You know, Vanderbilt's okay because he's good defensively, you know, uh, Jaden McDaniels has really high offensive upside while playing some defense as well but LaRavia a guy that just makes his teammates better passes people open is really good with court vision as well as he can space the floor a little bit as well but the biggest thing here with LaRavia is just the passing ability the the you know kind of upside of lifting up your teammates getting better looks for guys like Edwards Towns you know D'Angelo Russell who may or might not be there next season who knows what's up with D'Lo but LaRavia is a guy that I think is a, a good kind of swing here for your next starting power forward for Minnesota and it would be really interesting to see how he helps the other guys already there at 20 for the Spurs I have point guard Ty Ty Washington out of Kentucky he's one of those players that just you know feels like a confident floor general almost that Chris Paul Kyle Lowry type mold where he's really good in the mid-range but passes well you know plays defense and can rebound a little bit you know isn't the best three-point shooter his range pretty much is the mid-range right now but with his ability to pass and get to the rim a little bit I like Ty Ty I think for the Spurs here the loss of Derek White I think you can feel that a little bit so getting another guard who can you know move with the ball I think Ty Ty is a good fit here for the Spurs at 20 is also just the best player available at 20, 
excuse me, at 21, the Nuggets on the clock here. I've been going Jaden Hardy out of the G League Ignite. He's a guy that's dropping a little bit because of an inefficient G League season. The efficiency just wasn't there. He needs to get his three-point numbers up, his overall field goal percentage up, but is a high upside swing, and we've seen the Nuggets do that with guys like MPJ, Bull Bull, even Bones Highland I thought was a bit of an upside swing last year. It worked out as well as MPJ has worked out. So I think Hardy here, very good high school player, was once a projected top 10 pick. Super athletic, really springy, feels like a Bradley Beal, Cam Thomas type mold, and I think the Nuggets need a new shooting guard because Will Barton just doesn't do it for me. So if Hardy can be that guy for you, I think this is a great upside swing. And if he works out, he could be a star. I like Hardy a lot. And at, for the Ignite here at 21, great pick. All right, 22 to the Grizzlies. I have Kennedy Chandler out of Tennessee with Tyus Jones hitting free agency this summer. I think he priced himself out of, out of Memphis. I've said that in other videos. So if Ty Ty's here, I think they go him. But if he's not, I think they go Kennedy Chandler. A shifty guard off the bench comparisons to Maxi and Garland for how he moves because he's only really six foot. I've heard some rumors he's 5'11", but I'll give him six foot. Six one in shoes, I heard. Great for him. But <laughs> kind of shifty in, in how he gets by defenders. Uses his hustle and his quickness to get past guys. Get through the defense cut in and out of there and is pr pretty good as a scorer and a passer but needs to get his defense up there but the grizzlies have some good defenders already so i'm not super worried about it at 23 the philadelphia 76ers are on the clock and i have them going jalen williams out of santa clara their front court off the bench just isn't very good they used to have cool guys you know like mike scott off the bench with his ninja headband they eventually banned those but mike scott you know is a cool scorer off the bench for them i think they need another shooter and i think they need a, a good defender and Jalen Williams does both of those things well compared to OG Ananobi is a guy who will probably be not great year one but will get better and better every year and be a prototypical three and D plus kind of guy and I think it's a good fit for Philadelphia off the bench and maybe projects as a starter long term at 24 I have the Bucks selecting Marjan Bochamp out of the G League Ignite uh, last mock, I think I had Bryce McGowan's going here, but I decided this time to go Bochamp out of the Ignite. Has a little higher upside, I think. The Ignite guys usually do, but super athletic, really springy comparisons to Kelly Oubre with the way he can get up and down the court, throw down on your head, and also hit some threes a little bit. I think if he fulfills his potential would be the starting shooting guard for milwaukee and that's worth a shot here grayson allen is all right but i don't think he's the best starting shooting guard you can get long term so whether it's bochamp christian brown bryce mcgowan's i think they should go either shooting guard here or point guard if one of those two are available if ty ty or kennedy are on the board go back up point guard because at this point in his career george hill is just not that anymore but if those two aren't on the board go shooting guard try to get a starter there at 25 the San Antonio Spurs are on the clock, and I have them selecting Kai so out of the Kai Soto out of the Philippines. One of the highest upside players in this year's draft, but could be a bust, who knows, but I think he's going to be really good. If you're going anywhere from pick 20 through pick 30, I think it's worth a swing here. Because you don't know how long he's going to stay on the board. And his ability to space the floor 39% this year in the NBL is ridiculous. The shooting numbers from Kai Soto, efficiency-wise, in the NBL are basically unseen. Uh, I made a video on him yesterday as the most underrated player in the draft class. Go check that out if you haven't. I compare all his stats to other NBL guys. But Soto... A guy that is very versatile, ability to block shots, block per game, as well as catch lobs, finish inside, play defense on the perimeter as well, a little as well. Seven foot three, super mobile, is just one of those guys that I think is really high upside. Some people compare him to Kristaps Porzingis, and if you can get that kind of value at 25 here, that's phenomenal. I've heard he really likes the Spurs because of Tim Duncan, and he has worked out for them. So if he's here at 25, I think the Spurs should swing and take him here. At 26, I have the Dallas Mavericks going Hugo Basson out of France and the NBL. The big thing to me is they need another scorer next to Luka Doncic. A lot of times it just looks like he doesn't have enough help. Basson, 14 points a game this year in the NBL. I was very impressed with how he looked. Comparatively to Usman Zhang, I think Hugo and Kai Soto both performed better. But Hugo Basson, by far, performance-wise, was the best out of the three with the ability to score, shoot the three ball, and a lot of times just look like the best player on the court. 
and you know probably not the best defender day one but flashy passer great shooter good score natural instincts a little overconfident but that's okay with me i think seeing two great passers like luca and hugo on the court at the same time would be great as well as just the scoring ability he would provide next to luca maybe they keep brunson as well and i think that would be great as well so i think he is a good fit here in dallas they like international guys and they should go hugo here at 26 excuse me rough one here at 27 i have brace mcgowan's out of nebraska going to the miami heat i think they need more bench scoring especially at the guard spot i don't love uh gabe vinson as a long-term backup point guard especially with the struggles we've seen from kyle lowry in the playoffs you just need more uh sustainability off the bench there so tyler hero can play some point guard so getting another guard next to him in the backcourt bryce mcgowan's i think is great really high upside as a score really athletic compared to zach levine a lot without the hops so he's really athletic kind of forward and backward as well as side to side but the the hops just aren't the same but we'll blow by players will finish really well at the rim as well as you know projects as a good shooter the efficiency wasn't phenomenal at nebraska but has really natural scoring instincts and his shot looks really fluid as well so i like him as a potential bench scorer here for the heat at 28 i have the warriors selecting christian coloco out of arizona i think big man depth is one of the things they need you can see it in this final series with the Celtics is that a big thing for them is they kind of get pushed around on the inside because they just don't have the size or the athleticism in there to do anything about it because Looney's out there a lot Wiseman back next year will help but I think getting another good big man Christian Coloco I believe he tested at seven foot one at the combine so Coloco out of Arizona shot really well in the star drill there as well really good three-point shooters which was surprising because he hit like one three no I think he was 0 for three from three in his time at Arizona just wasn't a shooter there but maybe he has some shooting upside and if there's any team that can bring it out of them it's obviously the Warriors so I think Coloco a guy that maybe can improve as a shooter but right now kind of a Clint Capella type good rebounder good inside scorer can catch lobs and I think that'd be a good fit on Golden State I think they'd love a player like Clint Capella and Coloco I think can be that for them at 29 I have the Grizzlies on the clock here and I have them selecting Blake Wesley out of Notre Dame really great score I believe with the first pick I had them go as a point guard i think it was kennedy chandler out of tennessee so here i have them go shooting guard blake wesley out of notre dame really good score compared a lot to bone bones highland because there's because of his ability to break down defenders one-on-one -on -one with his handle as well as blow by hit in the mid-range hit some threes as well really dynamic offensively i'd love to see him off the bench here kind of a tyler hero type too i think he can be a guy that can put up almost 20 points a game off the bench i really like blake wesley i think the group off the bench with chandler wesley and uh zaire williams as well would be super exciting would be really great and would make the grizzlies a really deep team i like this pick at 29 all right at 30 just a guy I can't let slip out of the first round. I like Christian Brown a lot. Really athletic, you know, Alice Caruso type where he's really good defensively. Finishes really well at the rim through contact as well as some flash athleticism plays, dunks if you let him take off. And as a guy that isn't super consistent from three, is kind of streaky there, but super good at finishing at the rim. I think would be a really nice bench guard for the Thunder as well as they already have Trey Mann as well off the bench. So I think those two coming off the bench together would be super fun to watch together. I think they'd work off of each other really well and it would be super interesting there but that is the full first round for today i hope you guys enjoyed if you did let me know your thoughts on the video you know like the video think about subscribing again trying to 2k by the end of the month i hope you enjoyed and like i said this is one of the only ones with trades out there so if you're into that please subscribe i hope you enjoyed but that's going to be it for me today again i hope you enjoyed hope you have a good rest of your day Peace.